So I think right now one of the sea lions that came in is injured. So this one has a flipper injury that is cut, is cut all the way the length of uh, her flipper. Um, and it got infected. Oh, that looks bad. So this is all scar tissue, granulation tissue. Okay. But see these little divots? Yeah. That's where her joints are, and that's where it's deep in there. And so Would that's I the concern. Would I be able to put my leg in front of that or not? California is one of the most incredible marine ecosystems on the planet. And one of the most famous animals in that ecosystem is the California sea lion. I've come off the coast of Catalina to do a dive at a sea lion rookery. And while the animals here seem to be doing pretty well, just 20 miles inland, surfers, divers, regular beachgoers have been noticing a really disturbing trend line. Thousands and thousands of baby sea lions have been showing up sick and emaciated on the shore. In December this past year, sick sea lion pups began beaching themselves in record numbers throughout Southern California. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the number of California sea lion strandings for 2015 alone surpassed the total number of strandings combined from 2004 to 2012. Although marine mammals can become stranded for a number of reasons, Scientists believe that warming ocean temperatures and changes in prey availability are likely contributors to this unusual spike in deaths. And as mothers are forced to travel further offshore to find food, many pups are left to fend for themselves before they're ready. We came out this morning to walk the beaches and just see if we could find any of the stranded sea lions. And as we're walking on the beach here in Malibu, uh, we found this one, this dead one floating in the surf zone. It's too late for this guy, so we're gonna hook back up with the Wildlife Center who's been getting calls all morning about other sea lions that they're gonna go out and try and rescue. Will you tell me what you were telling me again about why he's coming up? Sure, so when they're, they're so malnourished and underweight like they are right now, they get cold really quickly, they have no energy, so they want to be out of the water to rest and to warm up. All right, so what, what do we do now? I'm going to try and net him. Right. Are you helping? Yeah. Hey, buddy. That's OK. That's OK, buddy. That's OK. That's OK. Yeah, I got him. Just kind of like scooch him down yeah. this way. Which way? He's going to go into the net. Into the net? Yep. Okay. He's biting onto the net. Yeah. <laughs> Let go. We're going to flip it like this. OK. And then actually lay it down. And you move them onto it. It makes like a little hammock. Oh, nice. And just pick it up like that. Oh, a little sea lion hammock. A little sea lion hammock. All right, buddy. It's going to be all right. Um, so he's definitely very skinny. I can see hip bones right here. And how often are you doing this? We're getting right now anywhere from 40 to 50 calls on a weekday and close to 100 on weekends. Thank you for saving him. Was he still alive? Yeah, yeah. he's alive, yeah. Okay. He's good. He's very feisty. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the first one of the day. Oh, he's, he's shaking. Mammals. Yeah. Because he's cold. Uh, it could be cold, it could be stress. It's a very stressful experience. Like the whole rescue and rehab process is actually very stressful for animals. You know, they're not used to people. They're not used to being around people. They're still wild animals. We spent hours with Colleen cruising up and down the coast, responding to calls of abandoned pups. Colleen, normally a marine mammal biologist living in Oregon, came down to Southern California to take up a temporary position with the California Wildlife Center and help with the crisis. What, what are the root causes of the problem besides the fish? I mean, what, what's causing the, the warmer ocean temperatures? Is there some causal that's, relationship we can draw? That's the big question that we don't really know. Um, it is an El Nino year, but it's a weak El Nino. It could be a larger ocean cycle thing that we just don't understand yet. It could be climate change related. It's just that's the big question is what's causing these warmer temperatures? And you know that's pushing all the fish really far offshore. But when you see all these sea lion pups coming up on the shore, that's an 
indicator that the larger ecosystem is unhealthy? Yeah, so sea lions and marine mammals in general are what we call an indicator species. And especially with the sea lions, when they show up on the shore and there's something going on with them, you know that there's something happening out in the water that maybe we, we can't see or we just don't know what's going on there yet. And so you're coming out here and rescuing as many pups as you can. Is there a broader solution? And if so, who's working on it? I don't know if there really is a broader solution because we don't know the root cause. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of at the local level we can address the symptoms, but the federal level is where you have to address the, the problems. And so maybe looking at climate change issues or fishing issues and interactions and what's causing this problem and how do we fix it, how do we address it and make sure that it doesn't happen again next year or the year after. Once the pups are taken off the beach, they're taken to a wildlife center for rehabilitation. But with so many pups stranding, almost all of the shelters are at full capacity. We just arrived at the rescue center and they brought in several new pups. And there's one right here that is so emaciated that they're gonna actually use a feeding tube to feed it. How much danger is this animal in? I mean, how sick is this animal? Oh, uh, they're pretty sick. I mean, they're really, if you see now, you know, they, they don't struggle very much. Right now they're so emaciated and dehydrated. So we're giving them fluids first. And so what she's doing, she's getting the, the tube uh, through their mouth, past their trachea, okay. all the way to their stomach. She just wants to be sure that she's in the stomach and not in the lungs before she gives the fluids. These are electrolytes. It's helping to rehydrate them. And then when she's done, she's going to pinch off that tube so no fluid comes back out. And then she's done. So all the ones that first come in, they're so dehydrated that they get several rounds of that first. And then we start putting them on just a kind of a weak recovery meal. But once they are feeling better and you know they had some nutrition and they've been here for a couple weeks, then they're a lot more of danger to themselves and us because they start biting each other, start coming after us whenever they think we have food. We have to be careful not to get them used to us. We're gonna go ahead and feed this pen. These are our best eaters. These are the ones that should be released this week. So they know how to eat, they know how to jump in the water and fight over fish. So we're basically just at the stage where we're fattening them up and as soon as they get up to a good body weight, they're out the door. So the doctor was saying these guys gotta get up to 40 pounds. Uh, how they much have to get up to about 50 pounds. You got a lot of gear, you got like these shields, you look like you're doing yeah, a yeah. cell extraction. <laughs> Things get kind of crazy uh, when we go in there to feed. They just want the fish, they're not, they're not after us, but it just helps us get in, give them the fish and get out. Uh, a lot easier. Yeah. And your, your concern is getting bit, obviously. Uh, yes, they do bite. They do get excited around feed time, and he is holding a fish, so they're going to go after that fish. And if your hand's there, he'll take that too. <laughs> These are pups. These are very small animals, but they still have a good set of teeth on them. Uh, you certainly don't want to get bit. Real dirty mouths here. Rock and roll. Here you go. There you go. I'll take that. Some on the deck for him. All right, so most of these guys are eating well in the pool. That's exactly what we want to see. There's one of them that's a little shy. He might be getting bullied by the others. That's okay, we'll feed him on the deck for now. So how many times a day will you do this? Uh, this goes on three times a day. Okay. And how many uh, sea lions do you have here? Two. Uh, today we have 23 in-house. Our capacity is 25, so we're right almost at about our, our capacity. Okay, and then, so if there's more rescues in Malibu, what happens? If there's more rescues in Malibu, what we'll do is we'll bring them in here, uh, we'll give them some fluids, and we'll call around to see if the center in San Pedro can take them or not. If for some reason they can't go down there, we could relocate them to a safer beach. Uh, we could hold them overnight and try again tomorrow. Uh, there are a lot of animals that are on the beaches that are not getting picked up. There's just way too many animals for the amount of centers available right now, including us. We, we are full. And what, have you seen something different this year as opposed to last year? Like, just a lot more extreme. Um, we just are seeing, you know, more pups than we've seen in the past decade uh, come up stranding and like five times the normal amount. So it, it's a, it's not just a little bit more, it's a lot more. And the survivability of animals, like if you bring them in, like how do their chances improve? I mean, everyone that we bring in will die if we don't bring it in. This year, it's been a pretty rough year. We've lost about half the animals. About 50% are so malnourished that by the time we bring them in, some are dead before we even arrive through our door. So it's, they're on death's door when we get them. And then these are the lucky, uh, the lucky 23 that are left out of all the ones that we picked up. 
Right now they're taking the weakest, smallest, most frail animal they have. Uh, they can't eat a regular fish regimen, so they mash up and blend up basically a fish smoothie. Uh, they feed it to her via a stomach tube. After that, they put her in the pool, uh, let her calm down a little bit, and they give her her one fish ration for the day. Oh, yeah. I got this in. I'm here a little. Oh. So she's basically still learning how to eat fish. Yes. I'm sorry, I can't watch this anymore. Come here. Come here. I know you want your fish. You can tell the animals are really sick when you see a sea lion pup that can't eat a little half a fish. Um, it's pretty sad. There we go. Mike, what's the cost associated with all of this? There's a lot that goes into taking care of these guys. It's very expensive. There's fish, there's the water, there's the staffing. I mean, there's the facility. To break it down per animal, um, honestly, I don't know. It would be probably a couple thousand dollars per animal. Who's covering the cost for you guys? Uh, basically, our donors. And there's a lot of volunteers that work here. There's a few government grants that we get, but it's mostly donations. So I think right now one of the sea lions that came in is injured. Uh, so Dr. Tom here is going to do a, a minor surgery on one of the flippers. So this one has a flipper injury that is cut, is cut all the way the length of uh, her flipper. Um, and it got infected and she's got some infections near the joints. And so we're using a honey wrap. We're putting honey on it, putting a, like a bandage and a support. Oh, that looks bad. This actually looks good, this pink. <laughs> so this is all scar tissue, granulation tissue. Okay. But see these little divots? Yeah. That's where her joints are, and that's where it's deep in there. And so Would that's I the concern. Would I be able to put my leg in front of that or not? What, what's the purpose of honey? Uh, honey has a lot of uh, antibiotic properties. That osmotic gradient uh, prevents bacterial growth, and it also helps vessels form. Oh, she doesn't like that. Yeah, this is, it isn't like being held. Yeah, it isn't, isn't it a painful thing? It's a don't mess with me thing. Are you splinting it right now? Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Of the ones that are coming in, um, you know, wh how long do you rehab them? Um, I guess it, it all depends on their size and if they're still sick. So some of them have, some of them had a, a really bad pneumonia coming in. Some of them have a lot of abscesses, and some of them are just emaciated, and so those are the ones we just need to, you know, just fatten them up and get them healthy again and get them back out. Into the van. So she immediately went back into the pool, In the huh? pool, yeah. She always likes to go in the pool. I think it's uncomfortable. And so she just wants to go where she feels, you know, safest, most comfortable. Yeah. The next day, we went back to Malibu to see the California Wildlife Center prepare four sea lion pups for release back into the wild. Once the sea lion pups were tagged and put into crates, we headed down to Nicholas Canyon Beach to watch the release. This is the final part of the process. So after taking these uh, four pups in almost two months ago, feeding them, rehabilitating them, they're now at a sufficient size and weight um, and they're eating well enough where they're gonna reintroduce them into the wild. Um, so these are the four success stories. Um, they're gonna open the cages, they're gonna head back out into the ocean and hopefully be strong enough to survive in the wild. Tell me about today. Uh, well, today we got four sea lion pups. They're all about nine months old and they should be ready for the ocean again. So we picked them up uh, about two months ago. Uh, they were very skinny, very emaciated, malnourished, dehydrated, in really bad shape. And um, today they're looking pretty good. So we got them back to health and this is the goal. So hopefully they'll do all right out there. Right. And I mean, this is, this is it, right? This is a happy day for these guys? This is it. I mean, they're gonna head straight for that water and uh, they probably can't wait to get back in that salt water. So what you're gonna do is stand between the kettles and just open them. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll have four people. You can pick whichever animal you like. Okay, everyone good? Okay, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Come on, friend. 
rescued, rehabilitated, and finally released into the wild, this small group of baby sea lions were given a second chance at life in their natural habitat. But with more than 3,100 strandings this season, the fate of other pups still remains unknown. And as long as ocean temperatures keep rising and food sources continue to move further offshore, baby sea lions will struggle to survive along the California coast. <laughs>